Radio Network. Why does the United States spend the largest percentage of GDP in the world on health care? Why do we have the highest cancer rates on the planet? The highest rates of diabetes, autism, and every other major disease. It all comes down to one thing. We are what we eat. Our food is devoid of nutrition and processed with poisons and additives. Our water is filled with toxic poisons and big pharma runoff. All of this has been engineered by design. We can turn the tide against the eugenicist by giving ourselves the nutrients our body desperately needs. To learn more, visit InfoWarsHealth.com. The site is literally packed with audio and video featuring top health professionals who don't bow down to big pharma. The fight against the new world order starts with you, and you can't stand against the machine if you're sick, tired, and obese. When you visit InfoWarsHealth.com, be sure and check out the catalog with nearly 400 life-changing products, and get free shipping when you sign up for AutoShip. The facts are in. The studies are legion. Sodium fluoride and other toxic members of the fluoride family are devastating the health and cognitive ability of the American people. So why are the social engineers adding it to the water? Simple. Dumb down the host population that the parasitic technocracy is feeding on. We may not have been able to get fluoride out of the water supply yet, but we can help to get it out of our bodies. I am extremely excited to announce the exclusive InfoWars Life Fluoride Shield Formula fusing six of the best documented ingredients from around the world to help the body remove not just toxic fluoride residues from the body, but a whole host of toxic substances. Let's take a stand against the globalist by blocking their poisons with Fluoride Shield. I use Fluoride Shield every day. Secure your Fluoride Shield and other pioneering formulations at InfoWarsLife.com today. Let's start cleansing our bodies now and support the InfoWar at the same time. That's InfoWarsLife.com. Alex Jones here to tell you about how you can help spread liberty worldwide while also enjoying what I have found to be the best tasting 100% organic coffee on the planet. For more than a decade, my favorite coffee has come from the high mountains of southern Mexico where the Chiapas farmers grow their unique shade-grown Arabica beans. We have now managed to secure these sought-after beans in a highly customized blend. Discover and try a bag of the Patriot Blend 100% organic coffee at InfoWarsLife.com. This coffee gives you a long, smooth pick-me-up for hours without the headaches and heartburn that so many other coffees give me personally. Hands down, this is my favorite coffee, and it's taken us years to secure connections directly to the Chiapas Mexican farmers. Drop by the site today, order a bag or two, and I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Available in original or with our immune support infusion blend, you will be supporting a free press, all the while enjoying a truly great-tasting cup of my favorite coffee. Available at InfoWarsLife.com. Now take you live to the Central Texas Command Center in the heart of the resistance. It's Alex Jones. Michael Maloof, uh, senior staff writer at World Net Daily, um, high level uh, former Office of the Secretary of Defense analyst and advisor, joins us to talk about EMP and what a serious threat it is. But let's say we're not worried about some rogue corporation group. Um, Iran, North Korea firing an EMP. What about other groups doing it? And then you've got the sun involved. And we know going back uh, in the last hundred years, there have been other EMP events that have melted uh, telegraph wires, you name it. But, but we haven't had a big event since we became fully industrialized the last 60, 70 years. I know the Pentagon did some tests with EMP uh, themselves back in the 60s with high altitude nuclear testing. Uh, but undoubtedly, the science is settled, to use an Al Gore-type phrase. The point is, they know that EMP is a serious issue. And I don't really see any time or energy being spent on it. So, so recap for us, I'm, I'm going from memory here, Michael. You know, they've had congressional hearings the last few years, I know that. They debate how much money it would cost to harden things. Uh, I see some news reports saying we're due for a big EMP naturally to occur from the sun. Um, I mean, what's the bottom line on this? And then what would it look like if we did see a lot of the power knocked out in the U.S.? I've seen some research papers saying that we may never get the power back on for a long period of time and that we would see societal level collapse. Well, everything's going to 
everything you just said, cited, is correct. Uh, it has settled. Uh, the scientists have uh, uh, concluded that EMP is a very viable uh, threat, whether natural or man-made, and it can affect our very vulnerable uh, electrical grid and, uh, and, and electronic components. Everything that we rely up and, and upon and take for granted today in our in our uh, highly industrialized society. While it's made us the greatest industrial power in the world, it's also our Achilles heel, and the bad guys know that. And so uh, you're, you're going to you're going to probably see more instances of localized uh, efforts by uh, lone wolves that, that might want to undertake this. We certainly saw it in San Jose last year. I reported on it back in July of uh, 2013, but it didn't resonate. I mean, I was talking to uh, uh, former CIA director uh, James Woolsey, and uh, he made mention of this, and uh, and nobody nobody picked up on it. And and here you had something not as not exotic at all, in which people were firing AK-47s into transformers to cause the coolants to uh, knock down. If you hit strategic uh, transformers and you knock out the coolants uh, that keep those transformers uh, humming, it's going to uh, you're going to have blackouts, and it could take weeks and months uh, to, to happen. But if you have a, a large-scale uh, uh, high-altitude nuclear explosion or even a, a, a massive solar flare from a direct hit from the sun, uh, it, it, it could take years to, to recover, and certainly, certainly uh, many months. And, and it's only uh, the latest estimates I've seen on what it would take to, to, uh, to do this is um, uh, – is uh, anywhere from uh, 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 may, maybe no more than twenty billion dollars at most. Twenty billion dollars uh, to harden these facilities. Do you have any information yeah. on who they think might be behind the attack in California on those transformers, or who would uh, the shootout with the police by that nuclear power plant that just happened a, a few weeks ago? I mean, there is more and more weird stuff going on. Yeah, well, it had to be. Uh, it, it's homegrown terrorism. Uh, what, whether it's a, a defined group or whether it was, uh, uh, well, in this case, there were a group of people. Uh, they found enough uh, uh, casing to uh, to suggest that uh, there was more than one person involved in this. It could it could be uh, it could be a trial run. Uh, now, this happened a day after, as I recall, it happened a day after the Boston Marathon bombing. And we have, there are a lot of Chechens in that area. So is there a connection? The FBI has supposedly been looking at these kinds of things. Uh, was it a test run for something larger? It's, it's quite conceivable. The fact that they're using AK-47s is indicative of uh, someone who had to be familiar with that firearm and, and uh, knows, how it, knows its capabilities. And, and also, and it could have been an, it, it could have been something as simple as an inside job, <laughs> because simply simply because the the, uh, the the transformers are were were uh, they they knew precisely where the lines were the, the fiber optic lines going lead lead it into the uh, substation in San Jose, and they knew precisely where the uh, seventeen other transformers that were knocked out were located, and knew precisely where to hit them. Mm. So. There's something to that uh, that cannot be overlooked, but you're not hearing anything from our uh, law enforcement authorities who are supposed to be investigating this thing. I think simply because they don't want to scare anybody. <laughs> they don't. If, if it was a foreign activity, it would, could, could it have been a cartel? I don't know. Sure, they don't want any foreign. I was about to say cartels is who I would think, or because yeah, uh, that's a, that's a real group that's actually you know kills police all over Mexico and and now. Yes. Uh, they've been having some setbacks, so I, you've seen them try to, you know, sabotage the police station in L.A. You know, that's a whole other issue. Do you expect that drug war, that hot war in Mexico to really pour across our border? Oh, it's already, it already has. Uh, it, it, and it's going, it easily could because the uh, drug cartels have uh, uh, been able to get into some of our largest metropolitan areas. I live in Reston, Virginia, and we have MS-13 right here, right across the... Uh, uh, Right across the way in, in Herndon, Virginia, and this is this is in right outside the nation's capital. <laughs> so, it, yeah, they're, they're, all, they're they're in the big cities for sure, and uh, and certainly down along the border areas. That's uh, and I think there was an episode recently where there was a major firefight using 50 caliber machine guns, hand grenades, and our border patrol people had to basically shut down the border because out of concern that it was going to be overflowing into into uh, it was in Arizona. That it was going to be overflowing into Arizona itself. 
So uh, there was an alert uh, by the local sheriff down there. I did a story on it, come to think about it. And uh, it was... It was Michael, uh, let, me, let me shift gears and we'll get back into EMPs and the book, A Nation mm -hmm. Forsaken, available at worldnetdaily.com, WND.com. Mm -hmm. Looking at this... Just a large geopolitical overview. Uh, as you know, one of the deputy secretaries of defense over uh, in England, or Ministry of Defense, came out a few weeks ago and said, there doesn't even seem to be a strategy with Obama. And, and I see all these ambassadors they're appointing who brag, I don't speak the language, I don't know how any of this works, and I don't care. I mean, what scares me is I'm just a radio talk show host doing this 19 years, but when I see these politicians on C-SPAN, Obama people, they know less than I do about most of the topics they're talking about. And I'm not some know-it-all. It seems like a very lazy elite that we've got in charge right now. And I mean the Republican Party as well, trying to commit suicide uh, with the open border situation. I mean, are they trying to do us in like the old Roman Empire? But I mean, how would you describe the political climate? Because uh, it just seems like it's really like rotten fruit or something. Well, uh, I don't think foreign policy is this administration's forte, and so they're looking more domestically. And uh, and, and 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 what we're doing internationally is reacting more to events rather than having any long-term strategy. And this is this is actually hurting us. Then, even when you look at the appointments that are being made at the uh, at our ambassadorship, uh, we at least it, it, it is it is uh, something that we we need to. Uh, uh, look, look more closely to make sure they have at least visited the country and they know something about the country. Uh, the civil service and the and the ambassadorships of, and from other countries, like like the United Kingdom, what have you, are people people who have vast background and experience in what they're going to be covering. And we we just don't do that. We we have a we have a we have a foreign service that that. that uh, is in, in a number of other countries, but uh, what's happened is that the Obama administration has increased the percentage of um, a representation with with a political appointees, principally his, his donors, uh, into these uh, high level positions, and they don't know anything about what they're doing. It's just a step forward for them. It, there's no commitment. No, uh, they don't have this burning desire to learn something about the country or to to, to better U.S. foreign policy, and there's no strategy. And I think that this is why you're you're seeing and hearing uh, complaints from overseas that the United States just uh, it no longer has a strategy, and that our standing as a world power is diminishing. And uh, and and it and, and the Obama administration doesn't seem to be doing anything to try to reverse that. And that segues right back into EMP. It's 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 like if you care about things and you want to learn about the world, you're a weirdo. But if you want to run around and have, you know, Jay-Z or whatever to the White House and have a party, oh, that's so cool. Uh, it, it, it's just, it, it really is frightening to think about uh, so much of the political class in this country, uh, I, I think, are smoking their own political propaganda. Well, I think the, I think you're right. I think the, uh, the problem is, is that it's, it's uh, projecting a, a, an image of the United States as weak and as a consequence, other powers will are seeing that and they're going to take advantage of it and they are and they're they're taking full advantage the instant you would create that power vacuum political military or economic power vacuum others are going to swoop right in and we're seeing that now with the chinese just in asserting itself uh, in asia well with a lot of our traditional allies to the point where japan and, and korea no longer look upon the united states as as uh, part of the uh, has provided them that protective umbrella that they were promised years ago, and so now they're going their own way. They're going to be militarizing more. Certainly, Japan is, and they have the industrial capability to to uh, go nuclear. Japan can do it within six months. I was about to say, we all know the Japanese have been doing secret stuff, and uh, the word is they've already got the weapons. Now they just have to put them in the in the missiles. Yeah. And yeah. Japan came out today. I've got the article and said they're going to they're looking at going ahead and going nuclear, or at least allowing the U.S. to station weapons there. That's how insecure they are right now. Oh, well, they're very insecure. Plus, you have a, a new mentality that's developing in the, in the, in the uh, form of the uh, current prime minister there, Abe, in which he believes more in militarization, more of a, uh, Jap Japan asserting itself. And what, is, what does this cause? It's created uh, more of a problem with, uh, between uh, China and uh, Japanese relations as a consequence. And, and of course, the uh, rivalry and the hatred between those two countries goes back uh, 
you know, to the beginning of the 20th century, if not, if not earlier. And um, Japan occupied China. That's right. A number of years.